So this is my craft at Tectoba's Capillary Hoop Stove. As you can tell, I'm not quite the craftsman he is. Mine ends up getting slathered in JB Weld along with hot stand joints. Um, but um, uh, this is probably the best alcohol stove I've ever built, and it's the best designed one I've ever used. It's simple to use, and um, uh, primes really quickly, burns really efficiently. But uh, I took it on a three-day backpacking trip, um, and um, when I came back, I left a comment that um, if uh, Tacoba could just design a simmering for it, it would be the perfect stove. So I thought, um, that's sort of lame. Um, I should uh, take a crack at it myself and contribute something instead of just mooching off of other people's good ideas. So uh, this is the concept that I've designed for a, the simmering for Tecoba's capillary hoop stove. And I guess you could probably use it for any other um, similar stove build. Uh, it's 5.25-millimeter, uh, two 5.25-millimeter aluminum circles uh, bound together with a rivet. And then I've um, cut hexagonal uh, vents into each one uh, with the different overlapping uh, the, the cut handles. So that's a just cut from a piece of aluminum uh, circles and then the little handles. And then I've wrapped the handles in um, silicone tape. So, I mean, you can tell that it's not uh, nearly well as well manufactured as Tecoba stoves, but um, this is more like a proof of concept idea here. So on um, full open, it rests uh, right on top of the capillary hoop stove like this. Um, and on full open, it cuts the oxygen consumption, at least that's the idea, to the stove to um, bring the flame to a simmer. So you can make things like pasta or rice uh, where you just don't need to boil water, you need to actually cook scrambled eggs, that kind of thing on the trail I like to cook. So, um, and uh, the idea is that uh, by closing these vents, um, you can actually um, control the flame and lower the flame to get sort of a low flame on your pot. Um, and the other reason I wanted to design something like this that closed all the way, um, or it should close all the way, but you can see my aluminum milling skills are not quite up to snuff, but uh, it's actually uh, does its job. I'll show you in the um, before the boil test. Um, it'll actually cut the flame off, which is something I had a problem with this stove. It's too efficient. It burns <laughs> too strongly, and if you need to cut the stove off, um, it's sort of hard to do. So uh, this, when it's fully closed, um, will eventually cut the flame off or cut enough oxygen to the flame off so that you can just, um, um, you know, a little wind or um, fan the flames and they'll go out and that way you can actually re-bottle your fuel if you want to, if you don't want to burn everything that's in the capillary hoop stove. So that's the idea. Um, it's a little, two aluminum discs bound together with a rivet, with two little handles with some insulating material um, cut in this sort of pattern so that we go from a full open to a to a full closed. So let's do the boil test. Before we do the boil test, uh, let me show you the idea here. So uh, I've got a little bit of alcohol in the stove um, that I will try and, and light real quickly to show you how this works. So So as you can see, um, just like Tecoba's design, the primes and the flames are burning within five, six seconds. Really just fantastic priming time for a stove like this. So on full open, you've got to let it prime, and then with the simmer ring on full open, you just drop it right on top there, and it will cut the flames um, quite substantially, but not so much that... Um, it'll choke the flame off. Uh, so it looks like it is for a sec, but give it a few seconds and um, it will prime right back up.
nice simmer going. Very fuel efficient. Keep things like pasta or rice at a low boil. And you can go right back to full burn. A little silicone. Things make it nice and easy to grab. So that's the idea. Let's do a boil test. Okay, so I filled the hoop stove with about one ounce of alcohol, about 30 milliliters. And here I've got uh, two cups, uh, approximately 400 millimeters of cold water. Uh, ideally, if you're backpacking, you'd have already uh, used some fuel to boil water. Uh, but I wanted to give you a guys a sense of what happens when you use the simmer ring on uh, cold water. So... Uh, this is probably 50 degree uh, Fahrenheit water. So um, let's get um, let's get the. I'm going to have a timer here, so it's going to be one ounce of alcohol, 30 milliliters of alcohol, uh, primed and then um, simmered. Alright, so we got a nice hard burn there. I'll put the simmer ring on. And then we'll throw the pot on. So here's our simmer flame. The pot above it. We'll come back when it's burned out. So you can see here, I've, or maybe you can't see, but you can see I, I jiggered around the simmer ring a little bit so that there's a little more oxygen flowing to the flame. So we've got a little bit more of a flame flowing to the pot to give us a nice, nice hard simmer. We're at 3 minutes and 35 seconds, 3 minutes and 40 seconds. We'll come back when it's burned out. It's going to be a while. So as you guys can see, once the flame gets nice and primed up, you actually get sort of a nice medium to low heat here. Uh, that's going to give you a, a good simmer burn but not consume a lot of fuel. So we're at almost 10 minutes and counting. We'll see you when we run out. Okay, so we're just coming up on 17 minutes and I wanted to give you guys a sense of what this level of heat will do to your water. So we've got a nice sub-boil, some, some um, bubbles at the bottom, but it's short of a boil. Still going. Alright, so we just passed 20 minutes and we're getting signs of a beginnings of a boil here from cold. So if you start with hot water or boiling water, or nearly boiling water, this flame will get you at a nice, keep you at a nice small even simmer. Okay so I turned the flame down a little bit because we got up to a nice simmer boil here. In fact I got up to sort of a rolling boil for a second so I dialed the flame back just a little bit. So now you can see we've dialed it back down to a simmering boil. If we want to dial it back up we just open those gates up a little bit like that. And we can get our flame back up. Pretty neat. So we're at 31 minutes and we're still going. Okay, so our flame is finally starting to putter out a little bit. 
can tell by the sound, and you can see it's sort of dying down. We're at 42 minutes and 13 seconds, and you just missed it, of course. Um, before this died down, I actually had a nice rolling boil going, so you should be able to keep a rolling boil going with um, this level of flame. So I actually wasn't uh, really expecting this sort of fuel efficiency, but 42 minutes, give or take, flame's about to die down, and um, that's the simmering. Thanks, guys.